All right, wargaming enthusiasts, we've got the tools, the tech, the talent. And in this vlog, we want to explore this concept, this idea of the joust. Overall tactic of building that checklist, building your toolbox independent of wargaming system. So we're looking at taking select concepts and figuring out how to apply them to every single game to give you that edge to decrease that learning curve, to give you that win. And for the Joust, I'm going to be illustrating this principle using Wings of Glory World War I, a fantastic miniature wargaming system. But this is just the framework, the visuals, to help understand it. As always, I want you to port it over to your system and figure out how you can use it in your very next game. So in Wings of Glory, World War I dogfighting, the units are always moving. And they're pretty fast. And you can play with one plane, two planes, five planes, ten planes. It, it scales up very, very well. And the idea of the joust, I'm going to simplify it, but there are some tactical layers to it. I'm going to take a plane, and I'm going to literally head straight towards, head on, guns blazing towards one of your planes. You're going to likewise do the same. And we're going to pass each other and trade a bunch of shots one for one. Now, why would we want to joust? Because this idea in wargaming, uh, especially in something like World War I dogfighting, you want to be on someone's tail. You want to be shooting your opponent without them shooting you. You want to shoot three to one, right? I have three units in range. I'm firing all three units at one unit. You want to isolate. I mean, that tactica is fundamental and core. But the idea of the joust, besides personal glory, is you are embracing the random of a war game. So in every wargaming system, and it's usually the dice, uh, there's this idea of fog of war. A, a lot of things are happening. Weapons bounce off armor. Maybe you hit a weak spot. Maybe an ambush works. So this idea of rolling dice to hit, to wound, to destroy, to cause different problems, to cause uh, critical hits, uh, again, depending on the rule system, and, of course, certain units have a greater chance of scoring certain things than others. Uh, obviously, if I'm firing a machine gun, I'm going to roll more dice to hit than if I'm firing a bolt-action rifle from that perspective. So within the rules, uh, the dice increase or decrease. But we've all been there, right? You've got everything lined up. You've got your machine gun team ready to go. You roll eight dice and you miss with seven. And you're like, what? That That's absolutely crazy. But that simulates the fog of war. Maybe your opponent saw you at the last second and they hit the ground. Maybe they took cover behind that wall. You know, that's the narrative. Who really knows? But there's this idea uh, overall that when it's my turn, I want to try and control the random. I want to try and cut down the random as much as possible. I want to isolate it. Uh, perfect example would be like getting re-rolls. A lot of systems have re-rolls where to hit, you roll some dice and then you invoke some special ability or PowerPoint or tech, whatever, and you get to re-roll your misses. Um, we see this in Chain of Command with the Americans. Uh, their disciplined fire, you hit on a four or higher on a D6, but if you roll a one, you get to re-roll those ones once. That's an example of controlling the random. Embracing the random, giving it to your opponent when it's their turn, and they roll the dice, you want to have some sort of mechanism where they roll more dice or they roll the most dice. I mean, right? In wargaming, I don't like to roll dice because anytime you roll dice, bad stuff happens. So the joust tactica is essentially saying at the beginning of the game, uh, again, going back to World War I, Wings of Glory, my planes do not have any damage on them. Not that I want to take damage, but I'm the strongest I'm going to be. So if I'm going to trade some shots back and forth... Well, now's the time to do it. And the reason why the joust is an easy tactic, if I'm going to tail you from behind, if I'm going to circle around, um, do a loop, try and tail you from behind, that, that's harder to do. That takes skill. Joust takes no skill. Point and click. Run towards someone. Fly towards someone. Zoom towards someone. X-Wing miniatures, right, across the table. So the joust is, is easier to implement. But it comes at a cost, because if I'm going to shoot you, you are going to be able to shoot me. I mean, we are literally head to head. So I'm embracing the random and saying that I don't have any damage. I'm going to be able to shoot. Let's see what happens. Now, ideally, now we jump into weapon profiles. Uh, Wings of Glory, whether you have a single machine gun, tandem machine guns, it, it depends on the plane, the time period. But we see different units have 
different weapons. Um, if you're flying an A-wing, that's going to have less weapons than, say, a Y-wing or a medium-sized ship. So if I can joust you, I want to try and joust with a weapons profile that is better than what you have. So I'm not just like picking a target and going randomly. I'm going to try and joust where the dice are in my favor, working against your favor. That is controlling the random. I'm also controlling the random because if I return fire, at least at the beginning of the game, I don't have any damage. Now, how damage is dealt is is also important because you need to think about this before you go in with the joust. In Wings of Glory, the way damage is handled is through a deck of cards. And it's a very, very unique damage system in that when you take damage, so if I hit you with my tandem machine guns and you take two damage, you have hull points. When your hull points reach the maximum, your plane disintegrates, falls out of the sky. I take two damage cards. I don't show those to you. They have numerical values on it ranging from zero to five, which represents how badly damaged my plane has been hit. So I could draw two cards and it's zero. Now think about that. This is the uniqueness of the system. From your perspective, you're trailing my plane. You're hitting me with machine gun bullets. They're going through the airframe. Maybe you caused damage. Maybe you didn't. You know you hit me. But in that fog of war, what's the damage? What does it look like? Now, there are cards where the engine gets hit. Um, you go on fire, your rudder is damaged. When that happens, uh, it's either announced to the player because they can physically see you're on fire, or they're going to be able to tell, wait, Fritz just banked to the right three times. I just shot him three turns ago. Okay, obviously, um, he's got rudder problems, so there's some deduction. But in that deck, in that deck of cards, there's the boom boom, an explosion. It represents you connected with my fuel tanks and the whole plane just exploded in the sky. Uh, there's only one of them. When you get that, doesn't matter the plane, doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the pilot, doesn't matter the hull points, whether you have one or 15, you just explode and you're removed from play. You don't want to draw that card. Now, what are the odds? What are the odds of drawing that card at the beginning of the game? I know it's like a Schroeder's cat where it's at the top of the deck, the first card you draw until you've confirmed that you haven't drawn it. But if we're going to do like the Vegas thing, it's somewhere mixed in there. And hopefully you mix the deck up uh, enough ahead of time. Side note, thinking for a moment, okay, there have been a few games, maybe two, two games where I got hit with that card right out of the gate. But that's out of, we're always playing Wings of Glory. That's out of um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games. So the point is, if I'm going to joust with you and I'm going to hit you and you're going to hit me, I don't want to get that that explosion card. At the beginning of the game, it's somewhere in that deck, but the deck is full. As we move to mid or end game, now there's 20 cards left, 10 cards left. You know, five or 10 planes have been blown up. Well, okay, um, that that that's the point. Like, I don't want to joust anymore. I, I can't take any risks because that card, that insta-kill is somewhere in there. So depending on the damage system, depending on the turn of the game, depending on the mission, you don't want to joust. Even if you have a superior weapons platform, you know, superior lasers, missiles, unguided rockets, whatever tech you've got for your system, maybe you have the advantage, but you don't for the return because it has the potential to affect you as much as your opponent. So when do you joust? How do you joust? Should you joust? I mean, it's, it's a tactic, um, but it's a calculated tactic because while it doesn't take much skill to pull off, I mean, it is kind of point and click, you are exchanging fire for fire. So how do you control the random? How do you throw the random on your opponent? And how do you make sure your weapons profile, so at least it's stacked, that you're going to do more damage to them than they're potentially going to do to you?